section 2.1, graphing linear equations. So first off, there are some things we need to know about our coordinate plane. First off, this point here in the middle, this point right here, that is our origin. And when we name our quadrants, we go start in the top right corner and go left to right. So there's quadrant one, oops, quadrant two, quadrant three, and this is quadrant four. So you, those quadrants you'll need to know. And then when you have an ordered pair, it always goes x comma y, where the first is our x coordinate, the second is our y coordinate. So we're going to graph this equation, 2x minus y equals 4. We are going to learn different ways of graphing later, but for right now, we're just going to plot some points. So what we do is we need to pick three points and plot them. So we'll pick three x values and figure out what the corresponding y values are that go with it. Some easy x values to pick would be 0, 1, 2, um, negative 1, 0, 1, I'm just going to go with 0, 1, and 2. And we'll plug these values of x into our equation to figure out y and solve for y. So we'll have 2 times 0 minus y equals 4. So 0 minus y equals 4, or negative y equals 4, divide by negative 1, and our y is negative 4. So there's our first ordered pair. Second one, we'll plug in 1 for our x, so we'll have 2 times 1 minus y equals 4, or 2 minus y equals 4. Subtract 2 from both sides, we'll get 2, so y is negative 2. And then this last one will have 2 times 2 minus y equals 4. So 4 minus y equals 4. Subtract 4 from both sides, negative y equals 0. So our y coordinate will be 0. And now we just take these as ordered pairs and plot them on our graph. So we go 0 in our x direction and negative 4 in our y direction. Then we'll go 1 in our x direction and down 2 in our y direction. And the last one will go 2 over in our x direction and 0 in our y. And then we'll go ahead and connect those points with a line. There we go. Make sure you do put arrows at the end because this will continue on. It will go both directions. Now your points that you pick might be different, but your end line will look the same. Alright, another way to graph this is to use intercepts. Well, think about when you have an x-intercept, that means it's when it crosses this x-axis. So notice for your x-intercept, your y value is always going to be 0, because you're not moving up or down in any y direction. And now, along the same lines, if we have our y-intercept, that's where it crosses the y-axis. And so this, notice your x is not going anywhere, so your x value is 0. So we'll use those ideas to graph by intercepts. So let's start by finding our x-intercept. Our y is 0, so we just substitute in 0 for y. and solve. So 3x equals 6, because 4 times 0 is 0, divide by 3x equals 2. So this means it crosses the x-axis at positive 2. Now, for our y-intercept, it's when our x value is 0, so we'll just substitute in 0 for x and solve. So 3 times 0 is 0, 4y equals 6, 
divide them both by 4 is 6 fourths, which we can reduce down to 3 over 2, which is the same thing as 1 and a half. So on our y-axis, we'll go up 1 and a half. And then we'll connect the points with a straight line. And there's our line. So this is a, just a different way of graphing lines. Now, when we have x equals negative 2, notice this means x is always negative 2. So, always negative 2, it does not matter what y is. So that means your x is negative 2 when your y is 0. When your y is 4, your x is still negative 2. When your y is negative 3, your x is still negative 2. So notice it's just a vertical line through negative 2. So anytime you have x equal a number, this is going to be a vertical line. Now we'll look at what happens when it's just y equals a number. Following the same idea, y is always 3. So even when x is anything you want, y is 3. So and when x is 0, y is 3. When x is 4, y is 3. When x is negative 4, y is 3. So now when you've got y equals any number, this is a horizontal line. Okay, so now we're going to have a table and given some actual real world numbers, graph them on a chart, and then use this line to estimate some values. So how we're going to start this is we've got to plot these points. So notice our x is 0, 1, and 4. So we can just go ahead and plot those. So we've got 1, send it out to 5. And notice our x is our years, so we will label this with years. And notice for our y, though, we start at 1,000. So we're going to draw a little squiggly, which just means there's a break. We're not starting necessarily at 0, we're jumping. So we're going to jump to 1,000. And then we're going to go up by a hundreds. And you can go up with different numbers. I just think this might be the easiest way to go. And notice our y is dollars. So our label over here is dollars for our interest. So now let's go ahead and plot these different points. So 0, 1,000, 1, and then 1,050. And then at 4, we're jumping up here. So we want to get a line that goes through. So now we've got our line. And now we want to estimate the value of the account in 6 years. So you could, just looking at this graph, your 6 would be way out over here. But if we continue this line on, 6 would be here, coming over here. It'd probably be around $1,300, close. And this is just our estimate. However, we can get more exact. Notice here, we jumped one year, and we jumped $50. And then here we jumped three years, and we jumped $150. So notice one year increases $50. So if we're going to six years, that means from four we increase two years, which means we'll increase $100. So that means we should increase 100 more than that 1200 which gives us our 1300 So that's just a way to be more exact with it. 
All right, next one is the same idea, except this time we're not given the y values. But we do know our x, which is our ticket to many we're buying, and then we can figure out our equation. So let's start with a. We know that the t tickets are $5 each plus $2 total. So we know our cost is $5 per ticket, in our case we're calling our ticket X, plus the $2 fee, or just a charge. So there's our equation. Now we can use our equation to complete this table. So if we sell one ticket, we'll have 5 times 1, which is 5, plus 2, so it'll cost us $7. If we sold two tickets, that will be 10 plus 2, which is 12. And if we sold three tickets, it'd be 15 plus 2, so $17. And now we'll plot these, so we'll make our graph. Notice our x is the ticket, so let's go ahead and get our labels. And we're selling 1, 2, 3, Four. And then it's gonna, going to cost 7, 12, and 17. So this is our cost over here. And you can go up by whichever units once again. So I'll just start with 5, 10, 15, 20. And so when we sell one ticket, or when we sell zero tickets, it's not going to cost anything. When we sell one ticket, it's going to be $7. When we sell two tickets, it'll be 12 3 will be 17 So notice we've got a nice line here. So if we estimate for four tickets, it's going to be about $23. So four tickets would be approximately $23. And if we plugged four into our equation over here, notice we would get five times four, which is 20, plus two, so 22, which is close. So you, that's why we're estimating it with the graph. All right, so now we've got midpoint. So anytime you've got two points, so we've got a point here, and let's say a point here. And they're on a coordinate plane. Let's go like this. If we were to connect these, there's a midpoint, which is the middle of the segment. And that's the point we're finding here. Notice, though, it's just taking our x coordinates and dividing by 2, or the average. And then the same with the y's. You're just adding your y coordinates and dividing by 2, which is just the average of the y coordinates. So when we find the midpoint between this point and this point, <coughs> the x1 and the x2 and the y1, y2 just mean this is ordered pair number 1, and this is ordered pair 2. So our formula. We have our x1, which is our first x-coordinate, or 3, plus our second x-coordinate, which is 4, all over 2, and then our first y-coordinate, which is negative 2, plus our second y-coordinate, which is, which is 7, once again divide by 2, so we'll have 7 over 2, and then 5 over 2. If you wanted to change this to three and a half and two and a half, you could. That's fine. But one thing to point out, notice when you talk about midpoint, it's a point. So your end answer should always be written as an ordered pair. So you see the word point, you should have an ordered pair. And that is all for section one.